Hi, this is Eric with Parts Doctor, and today we're going to show you how to disassemble your Whirlpool dishwasher. Reference the timestamps in the description below to jump to certain parts of the dishwasher. In this video, our aim is to show you how to disassemble your dishwasher. If you want to know more about each individual part, you can check out our other videos. First, we'll start by removing the dishwasher. First, disconnect the power to the dishwasher. If your dishwasher has a power cord, unplug the dishwasher. If your dishwasher is hardwired, you'll need to turn off the power at the breaker before disconnecting the wires in the terminal box, which is located underneath the dishwasher. Next, disconnect the drain hose from the sink, plumbing, or garbage disposal. Then, feed the drain tube and power cord through the holes in your cabinet as far as they'll go. Next, turn off the water shutoff valve for the water supply line. Then, remove the access panel on the bottom of the dishwasher by undoing the retainers. Place a towel or sheet pan under the dishwasher to catch any water that may leak. Now, disconnect the water supply line from underneath the dishwasher. Leave the drain tube attached. Next, open the dishwasher door and remove the screw securing the dishwasher to the countertop. If your dishwasher is side mounted, remove the screws from the cabinet, which may be located behind the cabinet seal or behind the plastic cap on the side of the dishwasher. You may need to lower the dishwasher's leveling legs if it is too tight against the countertop. Now, slide the dishwasher out from underneath the countertop, being sure to feed both the power cable and drain tube through the holes in the cabinet. Then, remove the top mounting brackets. Start by opening the door. The top mounting brackets are located here beneath the countertop. Using a Phillips headed screwdriver, remove the screws holding the brackets to the countertop. Then, gently pull the dishwasher far enough out of the cabinet to gain access to the back of the brackets. Please note that if the dishwasher does not pull forward, you should not force it. If you are unable to move the dishwasher forward, please check to ensure that there is enough slack in the plumbing and electrical connections. The mounting brackets are held in place by small bent metal tabs. Using needle nose pliers, straighten the tabs on the back of the brackets so they can pass through the slots on the frame. Then, rotate the brackets and pull them forward to remove. Next, remove the touchpad control panel. Since we will be working on the dishwasher's electrical components, disconnect power to the dishwasher. Note this repair can be completed with the dishwasher installed. To begin, open the dishwasher's door. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove these 10 screws from around the perimeter of the door holding the front panel in place. Then, while supporting the panel, close the door without engaging the latch. Gently tilt the panel forward and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, lift the front panel up and away from the arm hinges and set it on a soft surface to prevent scratching. Now, gently remove the door insulation from the door panel without ripping or tearing. Then, while supporting the control panel as it overhangs an edge, gently press down on the four plastic retaining tabs using a flat-headed screwdriver to separate it from the door panel. The pocket handle is held in place by four locking tabs, two here and two here. To remove it, depress the two larger locking tabs while pulling the handle in the opposing direction. You may need to use a flat-headed screwdriver to make this process easier. Then gently pry in one of the smaller clips to free one side of the handle and repeat the same on the other side. Exercise caution as the retainers are fragile and may break. Then remove the main control board. Since we will be working with the dishwasher's electrical components, disconnect power to the dishwasher. This repair can be completed with the dishwasher installed. To begin, open the dishwasher's door. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove these 10 screws from around the perimeter of the door holding the front panel in place. Then, while supporting the panel, close the door without engaging the latch. Gently tilt the panel forward and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, lift the front panel up and away from the arm hinges. The main control board is located here. Before disconnecting the wires, take a picture of the electrical connectors to reference later. To remove the electrical connectors, 
First, remove the connector brace by carefully prying on the four locking tabs, then rotating it down. Now, remove the connector box. Then, carefully depress the locking tabs for each connector and unplug the wiring harness. Using a screwdriver, gently pry up on this locking tab as you slide the control board to the left, then pull the board forward to free the retaining tabs on the back and remove it. Next, remove the door latch. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove these 10 screws from around the perimeter of the door holding the front panel in place. Then, while supporting the panel, close the door without engaging the latch. Gently tilt the panel forward and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, lift the front panel up and away from the arm hinges. The door latch is held in place by two retaining tabs. Using a flat-headed screwdriver, depress the locking tabs while gently pulling forward on the latch, being careful as it is still connected by an electrical connector. Then, depress the locking tab on the electrical connector and disconnect the latch. Then, remove the detergent dispenser. Since we will be working with the dishwasher's electrical components, disconnect the power to the dishwasher. Note this repair can be completed while the dishwasher is installed. Start by opening the dishwasher's door. The detergent dispenser is held in place by locking tabs located behind the front panel. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove these 10 screws around the perimeter of the door holding the front panel in place. Then, while supporting the panel, close the door. Gently tilt the panel forward and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, lift the front panel up and away from the arm hinges. With access to the inside of the door, remove the electrical wire from the retainer on the dispenser. Using a small flathead screwdriver, gently depress the locking tab on the electrical connector to disconnect it from the dispenser. To remove the detergent dispenser, insert a putty knife beneath the bottom three metal tabs, using a flat-headed screwdriver to help create space for the putty knife to pass through. Then, pry one of the side tabs while gently applying pressure to the dispenser. A decent amount of force may be necessary to ensure the tab does not lock back into place. While maintaining pressure, pry the opposite side tab. Then, push the dispenser through the opening and open the door to retrieve it. Next, remove the lower door seal. To begin, open the dishwasher's door. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove these 10 screws from around the perimeter of the door holding the front panel in place. Then, while supporting the panel, close the door without engaging the latch. Gently tilt the panel forward and disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, lift the front panel up and away from the arm hinges. Now, remove the two screws holding the vapor barrier in place using a quarter inch nut driver. Then, gently flex the barrier in the center while pulling to clear the hinges. Using a 3 16th inch driver, remove these five screws holding the lower door seal in place. Next, open the dishwasher's door and remove the old door seal. 
Then remove the door balance kit. It is best to do this repair with the dishwasher's door closed because there will be less tension on the spring. Start by pulling the end of the spring out of the door cable. Then remove the door cable from the wheels and the hook from the door hinge. Using a 5 16 inch driver, remove the bottom screw from the balance assembly. Then gently pull out on the balance assembly while rotating it counterclockwise to remove. If your dishwasher has tensioning adjustment options, make note of the position for reinstallation. Repeat this process on the other side. Then remove the door gasket seal. To begin, open the dishwasher's door. The door gasket seal is located here on the tub of the dishwasher. Start on one side of the gasket and gently pull it towards the front of the dishwasher and work your way around the door until the full gasket is removed. Next, remove the upper rack adjusters. To begin, open the door and fully extend the middle rack. The middle rack is held in place by hooked retainers on the back of both track and mount assemblies. To remove the rack, lift up on the front first, then pull forward to release the tabs on the rack adjusters from the hooked retainers. When replacing the dish rack, the rack does not come with the accessories, so next we remove those components. To separate the adjuster cover from the housing, pry on both sides using a flat-headed screwdriver. Next, pry in the back of the adjuster positioner clip while gently pulling up to release the locking tab. Then slide the clip up while fully extending the adjuster. Pull the clip forward so that it clears the locking tab and rotate it to remove. Now press on the top of the tether adjuster strap to release the retainer from the rack. Then slide it all the way down so that the opening aligns with the locking tab and pull it forward to remove. Now pinch the two tabs on the adjuster clip towards one another while pressing forward to remove. Now repeat the same steps on the other side. Then remove the float switch. Before starting this repair, disconnect power to the dishwasher. Note this repair can be done with the dishwasher installed. In order to gain access to the float switch, we'll need to remove the access panel, which is held in place by two retainers. The retainers are locked when they are oriented vertically. Using a flathead screwdriver, turn them a quarter turn to the left, releasing the locking mechanism. Now gently pull forward on the panel to remove the retainer. Pull the access panel forward gently, being careful not to rip the insulation. In order to make seeing this repair easier, we have turned the dishwasher onto its back. The float switch is located here in the float housing. To remove, pinch the locking tabs on the housing doors together and swing them open. Then, disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab and slide the switch up and out of the retaining slot. Next, remove the water inlet valve. Before you start this repair, disconnect power and turn off water to the dishwasher. Note that we are filming this repair from the side to make seeing this process easier. You can complete this repair with the dishwasher installed. In order to gain access to the water inlet valve, you'll need to remove the access panel, which is held in place by these two retainers. Using a flat-headed screwdriver, turn the retainers a quarter turn to the left. Then, pull the access panel out from underneath the dishwasher. The water inlet valve is located here. Place a towel or sheet pan under the dishwasher to catch any water that may leak. Using an adjustable wrench, disconnect the water supply line to the water inlet valve.
Then using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the screw holding the water inlet valve to the dishwasher's frame. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then disconnect the drain loop hose clamp by depressing the locking tabs and sliding it off the inlet valve. Then pull the hose to remove it from the valve. Then use slip joint pliers to remove the elbow hose fitting from the inlet valve. Then remove the drain pump. Now lay the dishwasher down on its back and set down a towel to catch any water that may spill out during the repair. The drain pump is located here. Using a pair of channel lock pliers, pinch the hose clamp and remove the drain hose. While depressing the locking tab, gently pull on the electrical connector to remove it. The drain pump is held in place by one retaining tab located here. To press the locking tab while turning the drain pump counterclockwise to release it. Then pull the pump out from the dishwasher. With the pump removed, look for anything caught in the impeller that could stop it from spinning. Then inspect the impeller for damage to the blades. If the blades are broken or worn, they can cause the pump not to operate properly. The blades of the impeller should rotate but should not spin freely. As you spin it, there should be resistance built up and released as the magnets inside the motor spin. Then inspect the impeller for excessive side-to-side -side play. It is normal for the impeller to be able to pull in and out like this. Next, remove the heating element. With the dishwasher removed, let's turn it around so we are focused on the back. The heating element has two terminals located here and here. Disconnect the electrical connectors from the element, making note of their location. Then, using an adjustable wrench, remove the fasteners securing the element in place. Now, turn the dishwasher back around and open the door. Then, pull the bottom dish rack out and set it aside. Remove the lower wash arm by gently turning the locking mechanism to the left until it clicks. Now lift the rear of the heating element up to pull the terminals through the dishwasher housing and then forward to free it from the retaining clip. Then remove the circulation pump motor. In order to complete this repair, you'll need an Odeker ear crimper. We'll leave a link in the description below to where we got ours. Start by taping the dishwasher door shut. Then. Carefully flip the dishwasher upside down on a soft surface to avoid scratching or damaging. The circulation pump motor is located here behind the sump damper. Using a 5 16 inch nut driver, remove the two screws holding the sump damper in place. Then lift it up and away to remove it. In order to gain access to the hose clamp holding the circulation pump to the hose assembly, we'll first need to remove the diverter motor. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove the two screws holding the motor in place. Then, depressing the locking tabs, lift the motor out and set it aside, being careful as it is still connected by wires. Now, disconnect the electrical connector on the circulation pump by depressing the locking tabs using a flat-headed screwdriver. Then, remove the wire from the retainer on the pump. Next, using an Odeker crimper, pinch the clamp and break it away from the hose. Then. Pull the hose assembly away from the sump assembly. You may need to use a flathead screwdriver to help pry the hose away from the inlet. Now, carefully pull the circulation pump away from the sump. Use a flathead screwdriver to help remove the inlet grommet. Then, remove the grommet from the old circulation pump. Finally, remove the sump assembly. In order to complete this repair, you'll need an Odeker ear crimper and a new Odeker clamp. We'll leave a link in the description below to those items. To begin, open the dishwasher's door. Then, pull the bottom dish rack forward and lift it up and out. The lower wash arm is held in place by a rotating coupler. Gently twist the coupler to the left to disconnect, then lift the wash arm up and out. Then, gently pull up on the manifold's water tube to disconnect it from the pump cover. 
Then lift the manifold to remove it from the dishwasher. Next, remove the pump cover by lifting up on the locking arm and rotating it counterclockwise to get it over this tab. Then release the two locking tabs on the water feed tube while rotating it counterclockwise and pull to remove it from the cover. Lift the pump cover up and out of the dishwasher. Then remove the filter cup assembly by rotating it counterclockwise till the tabs release. Then lift the filter cup assembly up and out. Next, pull the screen filter forward and out to remove it from the dishwasher. Then lift the diverter disc up and out. Carefully flip the dishwasher onto its back on a soft surface as to avoid scratching or damaging it. Using a 5 16 inch nut driver, remove the two screws holding the sump damper in place. Then lift it up to remove. Using a pair of pliers, pinch the hose clamp on the drain hose to remove it from the drain pump. While depressing the locking tab, gently pull on the electrical connector to disconnect the drain pump. The drain pump is held in place by one retaining tab located here. Depress the locking tab while turning the drain pump counterclockwise to release it. Then pull the pump out of the dishwasher. Disconnect the wires on the diverter motor by depressing the locking tabs on the electrical connectors and gently pulling to disconnect them. Next, disconnect the electrical connector on the circulation pump. Then turn the soil sensor assembly a quarter turn counterclockwise and pull it firmly to remove it. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab now, remove all wires from the clip on the sump assembly. The sump assembly is held onto the tub of the dishwasher by three retaining tabs. Turn the retaining tabs into the center of the dishwasher. Then, depress the retaining tab and push the sump assembly through. Stand the dishwasher back up and open the door. Then lift the old sump assembly out of the dishwasher. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove the two screws holding the diverter motor. Then, depress the locking tab and lift the motor out. Next, use an Odeker crimper, pinch the clamp on the hose assembly, and break it. Then, pull the hose assembly away from the sump assembly. Now, carefully pull the circulation pump away from the sump. Use a flat-headed screwdriver to help remove the inlet grunt. If you need to purchase a new OEM part, you can check out our website, PartsLactor.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. You want to make sure that you are searching with the model number from the tag in your dishwasher to make sure you get the correct part. That's it for today's video, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below, and for more videos like this, please consider subscribing.